It seems like a dream. It seems just not real, even when I'm looking back on it, because I just froze up. Your father has prostate cancer. I was 49 years old when I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. My brother had prostate cancer five years after I did. And only at that time did I find out that I had an uncle who had prostate cancer five years before me. In the black community, we have a much higher rate of prostate cancer. And the prostate cancer we get is a much more aggressive. That is a, a reality that I have to deal with, but it was never spoken about. And that is something that I wanted to always have that conversation with my son about. I have never heard of prostate cancer before that, so I didn't even think anyone in my family had cancer. I always thought that was something that happened to other families. You get 10 black men talking about prostate cancer with their wives around. 15 minutes later, you will find all the men have moved out of the circle and all the women have moved into the circle. They want to advocate for their uh, husbands because it's a very touchy subject within the black community. You don't mess with a person's manhood. You don't talk about it. Black men treat prostate cancer as more of a threat to their manhood than as a disease. We all live in a world where we don't always like the answer, but it's not about liking the answer. You need to take control of your own health. I talked to my son and he looked at me, he says, will you be okay? And I said, Brian, this is the best chance I have for doing this. Okay, so why are we even thinking about it? Let's just go ahead and do it. Let's go. Let's get it done. He reminded me of me that it gave me so much strength that it made everything else much easier. I remember how I felt so lucky when he was able to come through it. It was scary. If he was more closed off, I wouldn't have him around. So I feel incredibly lucky that I had a father who was willing to take care of himself. I think it is important that each and every one of us understand what our own risks are. You can make a change. Understanding your own health risk, looking after yourself. It's not weakness, you're being vulnerable. I wouldn't put one point on it, like you have to do this one thing to be a man. You are a man. What you choose to do next will inform what type of man you are.
Let's act like we're on vacation. Go stand next to that old gentleman there. I want a shot of you with the town in the background. <laughs> sure. I'll even give you a title for the shot. A city boy, moments before he got eaten by a bear. Alan, before he missed the shot. Good time to visit our town. Deerfest is just two weeks away. Deerfest, huh? Did you hear that, honey? You have a lovely wife. If you don't mind me saying. I'm Pat Main, by the way. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm Alan Wake. I won't pretend I don't recognize a famous writer such as yourself, Mr. Wake. A pleasure. I'm an avid reader myself. I hope this isn't too presumptuous of me, but... I'm the night host at the local radio station. Any chance I could get an interview? Look. Mr. Maine, I'm on vacation. In fact, I'd appreciate it if we could keep my being here just between the two of us. I'm sure you understand. Fair enough. I, you can trust me to be discreet. Not a hard man to track down if you change your mind, though. I hope you two have a lovely holiday. Very nice. I got a couple of really good ones. And I see you made a friend. That's cute. Right. Yeah? Hey, bestseller. That was my favorite writer. Are you there yet? Very. Yeah. We just got it. Are the locals giving you trouble? Just say the word, and I'll hop on a plane and come make sure that you're left alone, Al. No, Barry, we're fine. Great, great. Just want to make sure you can relax and recharge. So, how is the place? Has it gotten your creative juices flowing? Barry, we're just settling in. Okay, Al. I'll call back later to make sure you're doing okay. And you call me if there's a problem, okay? Okay. I'm just looking out for you, buddy. Talk to you later. I love you too, Barry. You know he's going to be calling you every five minutes. Barry is Barry. I can always turn off the phone. What did I tell you? Text message from Barry. He says hi to you, too. Alan, we're here. Come on, let's get back to the car. We need to stop at the local diner to get the cabin key from the landlord. A Mr. Carl Stuckey. He's waiting for us. I'll go fill her up while you get the key. I'll pick you up here in, say, 15 minutes? Sure. Alan, thank you for coming here with me. I love you, too. Go on. I'll promise to behave. I'd forgotten there were still places like this. Towns where everybody knew everybody. Welcome to the Oh Dear Diner. Hi, I was wondering if you could help me. I'm looking for... Mr. Wake. Alan, wake. Oh, God! I am your biggest fan. I know people say that all the time, but I really am. I'm glad to hear that. Rose. Rose, I'm looking for Mr. Stuckey. Carl Stuckey? Carl? Of course, Mr. Wake. He must have gone to visit the restroom. He'll be back in a moment. I can't believe it. I've got all of your books. I got the cutout from the bookstore when they took it out of the window. <laughs> and you keep it here. Well, okay. Good for you. Try the coffee. Just don't blame me when you fall in love, because it'll break your heart when you have to leave. Uh, Rusty right. here is no so longer much human. For quiet vacation. Nothing but black coffee under a thin layer of skin. Yeah, that makes two of us. Are you staying long, Mr. Wake? I can't believe it. I'm having a conversation with Alan Wake. Are you on your own, or is your wife with you? I can show you the town if you want. I get off work at six. <laughs> Thanks, Rose. We'll be sure to keep that in mind.
I wasn't ready to leave. I needed to find Carl Stuckey to get the key to the cabin. Do me a favor, Sonny. I could really use a tune right now. Coconut, number six in the jukebox. I'd do it myself, but both of my legs have gone to sleep. Bad circulation. Yeah. Are you serious? Coconut again? You disgust me. Call yourself a rocker. Unbelievable. Ha! It does that. Get stuck. Yeah, you need to give it a good solid whack. Now that's what I'm talking about, yes! This is it. I've died and gone to hell. <laughs> Don't go in there, young man. You can hurt yourself in the dark. I think I can handle it, ma'am. I didn't want to wait. I wanted to find Stucky to get the key and get out as soon as possible. The waitress was giving me a headache. Overeager fans always did. Hello? Mr. Stuckey? Carl couldn't make it. Unfortunately, he was taken ill. But I have the key for you and instructions on how to get to the lake. Cauldron Lake is a special place. Very inspiring. You got lucky this time, young man. You can hurt yourself in the dark. This really ought to be fixed, and then I must remind Sarah to change the lights at the station. It's been too long already. Even that sounds better than your singing. Are you all right? <laughs> the Andersons, they're uh, local musicians. We're waiting for Dr. Hartman to come pick them up. They wandered off from his clinic at the Cauldron Lake Lodge. Bye, Mr. Wake. Wow. It's gorgeous, Alan. It's something, all right. Don't worry, honey. I'll get you inside safe and sound before it gets dark. And I've got the flashlight. I know. I'm okay. Alice had a phobia. The fear of darkness. I wanted to make sure we were inside with the lights on before sunset. It's dark in there. We need lights. Can you figure out how to get the power on, honey? Hello? Anyone here? Power cable goes to that shed over there. A shoebox filled with books by Thomas Zane sat on the shelf. I'd never heard of him before.
For a moment, the oppressive feel of the nightmare I had seen on the ferry returned. I needed to get the power running in the cabin. There had to be a fuse box or a generator somewhere on the island. The Deer Fest guests have already started to arrive. The water was clear but dark. It looked very deep. Great. So much for keeping a low profile. There's probably a fuse box or a generator in the shed. old generator had been connected to the power cable. a bit. Sure thing. Have fun. It was a beautiful place. I told myself I could rest here, sleep here, and forget about my work. I thought we could be happy here. Alice? Honey? Alan, I'm upstairs. I have a surprise for you. Well, hello there. I'm not the surprise. It's in the study. Go take a look. <laughs> okay. Surprise! Alice? What is this? I guess I have a small confession to make. I thought maybe you could write here that a change of... ...scenery would get you past... Damn, Alice, you... Everyone Hey, keeps... hey, hey, just hear me out. There's a local doctor, Dr. Hartman. I read a book of his. He has a private clinic here. He specializes in helping artists. Maybe so now you want to get me committed? No, it's not like that. That's not... Alan? Alan? I don't, just don't. I don't want to hear it. God damn it, Alice. God damn it. I knew she wouldn't follow me in the dark. The cabin had gone dark. All the lights were out.
Alice, I'm coming! It's all right, I'm coming! Among Alice's things was a book, The Creator's Dilemma, by a Dr. Emil Hartman. Seeing the book brought back my fight with Alice. I didn't like it, and I didn't like the guy's smug face on the cover either. Among Alice's things was a book, The Creator's Dilemma, by a Dr. Emil Hartman. Seeing the book brought back my fight with Alice. I didn't like it, and I didn't like the guy's smug face on the cover either. The gas station was my best bet. They'd have a phone I could use. It looked like a long hike through the forest to get there. Hello? Is someone there? I've been in an accident!
The lights up ahead were a good sign. Maybe I wouldn't have to hike all the way down to the gas station to find a phone. Anybody there? Please, I've been in an accident. Hey, hey, you! Phil! There's been an accident. I need help. Listen, Deposit. I need to. Premium cabins for rent.